The Jewel of the Silk Road Samarkand was once the largest and most influential city in Central Asia. Right at the heart of the exchange of valuable goods and ideas, it has left its mark on history. Its grandeur still stands. Intricately designed mosques and Islamic schools along with mausoleums line these ancient streets, with towering blue domes and tiled archways. The city's impressive architecture transported me to another time and another place. This is the first part of my time in Samarkand, and here's how it went. Good afternoon, guys, and welcome to Samarkand, Uzbekistan. I just crossed over from the Tajikistan border, which is only about 30 miles away, so it's pretty close to Tajikistan, and I'm super excited to have this as my 120th country. I'm going to have about 10 days here in Uzbekistan, and there's about three old Silk Road towns that I want to check out. Starting here in Samarkand, then I'm going to head to Kiva and Bukhara, which are all these like beautiful old Central Asian towns with just beautiful old architecture. But starting off here in Samarkand, this was once known as the Jewel of the Silk Road. And it was at one time the largest and most beautiful city here in Central Asia. And today it's this massive open air museum where you're just surrounded by some of the most beautiful mosaics, some of the most beautiful mosques, and just blue domed buildings and I'm super excited to walk around and show you guys this place because everywhere you look is just beautiful. Most of the architecture that we're gonna see around today dates back to the Timurid reign, which was in the mid 1400s, 1500s. Yeah, very excited to show you guys this. So today, right in the heart in the center of Samarkand is the Registan, which was kind of the central town square and was one of the main meeting areas. And in the middle, there's just these three massive madrasas, which are Islamic schools. So I'm gonna start off exploring Samarkand by heading to the Registan, which is right in the middle. And again, as you're walking through the downtown part of Samarkand here, you'll just see these massive blue domes. So yeah, let's start by heading to the Registan. So I had to pay a $5 entrance fee and $3 for photo and video, and I'm gonna enter the main square of the Registan here and just check out this view as you're walking in. just arrived in the central courtyard of the Rajasthan, which in Persian means the desert place because we're in the middle of the Central Asian desert. And the Rajasthan, this was built um, by King Timur during the Timur Renaissance in the 1400s. And around the courtyard here, we have three Islamic madrasas, which are old Islamic schools, places of learning the Islamic faith. And they were also places where students resided. And so we have three, the oldest one was built in the 1400s and then these were built in the next couple hundred years after that and I'm just blown away by the amount of detail on all of this architecture. You have these beautiful sky blue domes that are just so detailed and just have such intricate tiling all throughout the building and then every madrasa just has these massive archways that are about 40-50 feet tall as you're entering into all of them. So. We have a couple hours here, so I'm just gonna like slowly enjoy just the architecture. There's so much detail in every little piece of this, and I wanna slowly take my time wandering through all three of these madrasas. Alright guys, this courtyard, you are just surrounded 
by beautiful buildings, amazing tiles, and they all just have this similar front facade with like this beautiful arched door. But as you enter the Registan, the one to the left is the original and it's the oldest. It's the Uleg Beg Madrasa, which is named after the grandson of Timur who built this was the architect and he was a famous astronomer here. So let's uh, start by admiring the outer arch and then we'll head in. I haven't even gone in the madrasa yet because I'm just admiring this archway. Just look how beautiful the ceiling is, how detailed all of the tiles are. And then like at the top of this inner arch here, you just have all of this texture, this geometric shapes, and it's just so beautiful. You have a bunch of Farsi writing along here, and then you can look out here and see the other madrasa nicely framed in the archway here so very beautiful interior and again just taking my time appreciating all of the little intricate artwork that's all throughout this madrasa here and this is just the first one so let's head in and check out the courtyard and what's inside the madrasas So I've just entered the main courtyard of the original madrasa here and there's these beautiful little trees, nice little benches and it's a lot more commercial than I pictured. There's a lot of shops you can buy like traditional Uzbek clothing, rugs, hats and everything and then there's even like a little cafe up on the second floor so I'm hoping to check that out in a bit but just all around the courtyard here you have just beautiful tiling, these incredible arches and just amazing architecture here. So I'm gonna start by heading into the main mosque here, which is on the other side of the entrance. So let's check that out. The inside there was much more of like a museum, kind of giving the history of the Registan and Samarkand and then Uleg Beck himself who was an astronomer. So there's like this astronomy room that had some maps of the stars and everything. So not a mosque like it used to be, but very cool museum, gives you some cool history, has some old artifacts. Anyways, up on the second floor, I see some people sitting at a cafe. So I'm gonna see if I can head up there and get like a coffee or a tea or something overlooking this courtyard in the Uleg Bex Madrasa. So let's see if we can go up there. just come up to the second floor of the madrasa here overlooking the courtyard. It's beautiful blue tiles and archways and got a little Turkish coffee here to sip and enjoy these beautiful views. This is like one of the coolest places I've ever gotten a coffee so let's sip the Turkish coffee and enjoy. That was the first in the original madrasa here and very cool interior, expensive coffee. It was like three or four dollars for that little Turkish coffee, but nice view overlooking the courtyard. So right across from the Ulbek madrasa is the Sherdor madrasa, which was built 200 years after the original here. So this one was finished in 1620. So let's head over to the Sherdor madrasa and check that one out. 
from the outside at least just has a very similar shape and look to the Ulbeg Madrasa. It has this like archway and then the two minarets. The only difference is you have these two domes that have this really interesting texture to it and these bright sky blue tiles on the top here. And then you also have this really interesting mosaic along the top of like a tiger with a human face in it, which is weird for Islamic art to have any sort of human figure on it. So. Anyways, we're going to head in there, again, check out just the beautiful archway, and then we'll head into the inside of the madrasa and check it out from the inside. So, let's go. So walking into the sure door madrasa, it's a lot more kind of an open feel. There's a few trees, but they're not as big. They're a bit smaller here, and it's a little bit quieter. You still have this kind of commercial feel to it. There's a bunch of shops along all of the lower levels. And then there's like little stages for like photo shoots where you can try on some like Uzbekistan costumes and you know get some photos done in here but a few less things to do here and there's not the coffee shops up on the top level but beautiful tiles just all around and you have these incredible archways just framing the courtyard here inside this madrasa. So that was the Sher Dor Madrasa, and the last madrasa here in the Registan is the Tilya Kori Madrasa, which means gilded madrasa, and it's the home of like the grand mosque here amongst all the madrasas, and it was built about 10 or 20 years after this other madrasa, so in about 1640, 1650. And from the outside, it has just a slightly different style. I mean, you still have this big arch, but then you have all of these little arches on the side. So it has a different look than the other two madrasas. Then at the back end here, probably above the Grand Mosque, is where that giant blue dome is. So let's head in and check out the last madrasa here in the Registan. So inside the Tilya Kori Madrasa, we have this big open courtyard. It's bigger than any of the other courtyards, and you have this small little garden with some vines in the middle, and then it's actually just like a single level row of dormitories all along the outside here, but you have just these beautiful tiled archways again. And then on the western end of the courtyard, you have the massive Grand Mosque that has the really high blue dome. So let's head into the mosque and see what it looks like on the inside. visited the Grand Mosque there and it was just really beautiful. It was very interestingly lit with like this orange light, but the walls were this like deep blue color and there was so much gold accent to it and the, the dome of the roof just had these like gold leaves painted on it and then there was a bunch of Arabic inscription all along the walls there and then just so much gold detailing and accents all throughout the mosque and that's why it's called the Gilded Madrasa because it has just all of that gold throughout it. So anyways that was the last madrasa here in the Registan but this has been 
an incredible experience just seeing the Registan here. Like, honestly, if this was all Samarkand had, I would be so impressed and it would be amazing. But there's still like four or five other historic architectural sites that I have to see in the city. So we have a little bit more time this afternoon. So I'm gonna head out of the Registan here and explore Samarkand a little bit more. Just west of the Registan, you can go down the main road here a few blocks, just like a quarter mile or so, and there's two mausoleums of some old rulers of the Timurid Empire. So let's head over there and we'll check out these nice like domed mausoleums for some of the leaders here. first mausoleum we're coming across here is the Ruhabad mausoleum which was built in the 14th 15th century and relative to a lot of the rest of the architecture here in Samarkand it's quite boring it's just kind of this brick exterior has a bit of like a dome to it and then on the inside just a white high domed ceiling and compared to the mausoleum that we're gonna go to next, that's just like a block away, you can actually see it from here. It's gonna have like these beautiful blue domes and a lot more of the Samarkand brand to it. So let's head over to the other mausoleum and check that out. Just on the other side of the park from the Ruhabad mausoleum is the Tamur mausoleum and this one is really grand in architecture. It was built in the early 1400s when Timur died and it's his final resting place here under this dome and Timur was one of the founding fathers of the Timur Empire in the mid 1300s to 1400s and he was one of the fiercest rulers of the time uniting a lot of what is modern day Afghanistan, Iran, and Central Asia and he was just a fierce and brutal leader of that empire. So this is the mausoleum to honor his life and what he did for the Timur Empire. And the architecture style is what was later inspired a lot of like the Mughal architecture in India. It looks like there's just again some beautiful tiling, some nice arches, and a beautiful blue sky dome. So let's head down there and check it out. It was 30,000 som, about $3 to enter the mausoleum here. And right as you come down the stairs, there's this amazing archway, beautiful blue tiling and high ceilings that we're gonna walk through to enter to see the mausoleum. So let's head in. So as we enter the mausoleum here, right in the center, there's this big archway and then on the ceiling here, there's this beautiful like white and really light blue with golden specks right in the middle of the arch here. And then there's this map here that shows all of the conquests of Amir Tamur. And it's just amazing how much control he had all through Central Asia was just all under his control. This is the capital of the Timur Empire in Samarkand. So very cool. Let's head in and see his tomb.
that was one of the most beautiful tombs I have ever seen. It's just completely covered in gold and has just such detailed inscriptions all around the interior. And then in the middle, there's a couple tombs for Timur and some of his family members. And it was just amazing. Had a very similar look and feel to the Grand Mosque in the Registan there. And there's a legend that says that inscribed inside of his tomb, it was written, whosoever disturbs my tomb will unleash an invader that is greater than I. And his tomb was disturbed on June 20th, 1941. And just two days later is when Hitler started his invasions in Europe. So whether that's a legend or whether that's true, crazy coincidence on timing. And just an amazing tomb to see. Beautifully lit, just high ceilings, incredible chandelier, and so much gold. So very, cool to go in there, totally worth coming in here. Absolutely gorgeous building on the outside and in the inside and just has a very magical, mystical feel to it. So anyways, let's keep walking around the complex here, see what else is around his mausoleum, and then we'll keep exploring Summercon. guys that was about it for the Timur mausoleum and it's about six o'clock now and I actually have an evening train to take me overnight to Kiva it's about a 10 or 11 hour train ride overnight halfway across Uzbekistan to Kiva and so I'm gonna spend a couple days in Kiva and then Bukhara and then I'm gonna come back to Samarkand at the end of my trip because I'm flying out of here and there's a lot more to see and do in Samarkand a lot more mausoleums, a lot more beautiful architecture. So this was just the first day here in Samarkand. And so, yeah, this will be a little bit different because I'm gonna go take a break from this video, go shoot a couple other videos, check out a couple of the, the other little towns here in Uzbekistan, and then I'll come back to Samarkand to finish up the second day here in Samarkand. So, and by then, I'll have an opinion on Bukhara and Kiva and be able to let you guys know what's the best and what's the most beautiful city and old town to visit here in Uzbekistan. So yeah, gonna go pack up my stuff, jump to the train station, and I'll see you back in Samarkand in a couple days. So see you then. <laughs> 